Hey guys, it's Mario here. I am inside of the Pantheon here in Rome, Italy. Pretty awesome location to be filming in. Uh, actually, a lot of people, as you guys can see behind me here, uh, there's a ton of stuff going on. Rome, Italy, pretty busy any time of the year that you check it out. And I want to shoot a quick video for you guys inside of this building, which is the oldest standing building, about one of the most important principles that you can do to manage and to improve your health, and that is how to improve your sleep. So how to better your sleep, how to get better sleep at night. And why am I actually talking about this? Why is this such an important thing? I think in today's world and this time and age, we're kind of celebrating the heroes and guys who are saying, well, I'm just the productive superhuman guy who's able to sleep three hours at night and I'm just gonna able to get everything done and I'm super productive I use some kind of biohack or some kind of hack out there to improve my productivity get better results in the gym to improve my health fitness like all these all these things in your life and nobody's really talking about sleep I mean everybody's celebrating the hero who can sleep only four hours and somehow magically get things done well in reality if you look at all the research which I'm gonna present to you guys in this video is that that's not really the case. Like you can't really be your best self if you're lacking sleep. And the first uh, piece of research that I wanted to present for you guys is a study that you probably heard of already, the study of 10,000 hours to become a master at something. So that is a famous Anders Ericsson study that Malcolm Gladwell made popular in his uh, book, The Outliers. I mean, the study clearly says basically you need 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to become a master at a certain skill, so any skill, anything that you do, either becoming a violinist, a soccer player, a pianist, guitarist, anything, you need those 10,000 hours. But what is the second finding of that study that most people are not aware of is that when they actually study these guys, they found that almost all of them, on average, slept more than eight hours a night. So that kind of contradicts what we hear in these uh, life hack magazines or these websites where guys are just sleeping for some reason, like two, three hours a night and they're getting everything done, which is essentially not true. So that is a very, very important thing to distinguish that the world's top masters, the guys who are the, the most skilled, the most productive ones, the guys that break world records, I mean, they have to sleep more than eight hours a night. So why wouldn't we have to if we want to improve ourselves, when we become the best version of ourselves? Another piece of research that I want to throw you away is a study done in the University of Pennsylvania, actually, when they took a bunch of people and they just simply compared, okay, what happens if you sleep deprive someone? So let's say the baseline sleep is eight hours a night, you know, you don't need your eight hours. What happens if you put those people on six hours of sleep? And within just two weeks in that study, something fascinating happened. When they did the test on these people to test their cognition, their performance, their, their health markers, and all these things, they actually found that their overall performance declined to a level that they would had if they were 48 hours without sleep, after just two weeks of sleeping, six hours. So the problem with this is, in, in general, problem with lack of sleep is two things. So number one is that it's a cumulative effect. So these people were sleeping six hours, which most of you guys probably think it's, it's a solid amount, but the cumulative effect of this deprivation actually compounded to the fact that these people couldn't operate. They, their levels of cognition were just really plummeting down to a level where they were basically had complete insomnia for two days, which is quite fascinating if you think about it. And the second most important thing here is that none of these people were actually aware how this was affecting them. So they were not aware that they were lacking any kind of sleep and they, they weren't aware that their performance was going down. So none of these people were aware of it. And that's a really interesting thing because if you talk to most people who are severely deprived, you will hear, well, I don't, I don't feel any different. You know, I sleep eight, nine hours, I don't feel any different. Or I don't feel like I'm uh, hindering myself in any way if I sleep six, seven hours, right? So that's the problem. It's a delusion. It's a delusional effect because your brain is not at that level of self-awareness to actually know if you're sleep deprived, especially if you've done it for a very, very long time. And one interesting study that I want to throw on this, which the effect of sleep deprivation on your immune system, before I dive into the health and fitness thing, this is a very, very important study. They actually took 153 participants. They put them on five and a half hours of sleep versus eight hours of sleep. They divided the group in half. It actually um, inflicted them with the rhinovirus, which is, a, which is the virus that induces the common cold. And I mean, I'm not sure where they actually found 153 people that decided, hey, I'm gonna expose myself to the cold virus just voluntarily. But funny thing happened is that those people who were exposed that had only five hours of sleep, they actually got sick 
a lot more than those people that slept eight hours. And on the average, it was a crazy difference, like seven and a half times higher chance of getting sick if you haven't slept. And if you, you probably think about a little bit in your own life, and I know if I look at my own life, the times that I really got sick because um, of these cumulative effects of stress is really when I missed sleep. And that's a big deal. Uh, the insomnia usually is caused by massive amounts of stress, and that insomnia then results later on in that your inability to control your immune system and to all these other functions. And one final one that is really, really interesting in the study that I want to present for you guys, because I know you are interested in health and fitness, you're interested in losing body fat, getting ripped, and a lot of you guys are on a diet, a lot of you guys are doing a kind of a weight loss thing. So one fascinating study that done at the University of Chicago was actually that they took a bunch of people in, in the study and they measured to see what happens if you sleep deprive people who are on a fat loss diet. And something fascinating happened actually. So people who were sleep deprived in this study in several after several weeks, they actually lost the same amount of weight as the people who slept enough. But the funny funny was that they actually measured where the weight loss came from. And uh, the funny thing is only the, the quarter of the lost weight was actually body fat in the sleep deprived group. So only 25% of the weight lost was coming from body fat. And the three quarters came from lean muscle tissue, which is an insane amount. Like if you think about it, basically if you sleep deprive yourself, plus if you put yourself in a caloric deficit, you're gonna lose a massive amount of muscle mass, which is something you definitely don't wanna do if your goal is to be very, very successful in long term in terms of dieting, getting to a lower body fat percentage, getting that awesome looking body, and succeeding at your weight loss goals. So aside from that, one interesting thing about this was actually that they found that the hormone ghrelin was insanely increased in the sleep deprived group. That hormone basically regulates your hunger and you were more hungry and plus you crave more for carbohydrates, you crave more for processed carbohydrates and fats that that ideal combination that a sugar, fat, and salt combination is something you will crave a lot more if you're lacking sleep. So, I mean, I could go on and on. There's a ton of other research. Basically, I could, I could talk about research all day here, how sleep is good and how lacking sleep is bad. But what can you do right now that is backed up by research to improve your sleep? What can you implement starting today in your life that will handle this portion of your life once and for all to get you better sleep and to make you more productive, get you better results in weight loss, fat loss, in your business, in your relationships, and every single area of your life will improve if you get these things handled. And here are my favorite tips to improve your sleep. And the tip number one will simply be dimming the blue spectrum of the light at night. So this is very, very easy to do. I mean, most people are not even aware that there's a different spectrums of light and they affect your body differently. So if you expose your body to the blue spectrum of light at night, you're actually blocking the production of melatonin, which is the primary thing involved into making you fall asleep in that nice, steady little way that happens in nature normally. But since we're awake at, in the middle of the night, we're like checking out Facebook, we're watching tablets, our phones, our computers, TV. You know, these things are keeping us away because they're constantly bombarding us with the blue spectrum of light. And you wanna make sure that you install apps like uh, F.Lux, which is a very famous free tool which you can install on your computer that will block that blue spectrum of light and will allow your body to sink to sleep despite the fact that you are spending time on your computer. So that will be the best thing you can do for yourself. And also, generally, you want to dim the light inside of your house as much as possible before you're going to bed. And you want to start doing that, let's say, an hour before. You want to block out that time and say, well, this is my kind of pre-bedtime. I don't want to do anything stressful. I don't want to do anything that will just and pump my adrenaline levels and things like that, you wanna basically start chilling down a little bit, dimming the light and really relaxing and letting that stress a little bit dissipate, invest time into things like meditation. That will enhance massively your quality of sleep. And the second tip that I have for you guys, a really, really important one, is to really cut out all the electronics while you're sleeping and at least 20 minutes before you go to bed. Phone go, goes on airplane mode, laptops are turned off, TVs is turned off, like all the notifications, sound, vibration, everything is done. So you have your moments of peace and quiet while you're sleeping. This is a very, very critical thing because I know a lot of people that just sleep with their phone right next to their head. The phone has still vibration or some kind of notification thing or even like a light beeping, uh, like uh, beaming at night and things like that. You know, you don't wanna have that 
right next to your head while you're sleeping because that's gonna interfere. It's not gonna allow you to get into that deep sleep, which is definitely necessary to recover and replenish your body throughout the day. The third tip that I have for you is how do you avoid that noise? How do you avoid that noise that is happening? Well, for that, you wanna make sure that you use something like earplugs. Earplugs are my, like my best investment that I made probably in my whole life. The return on investment on like just a $1 pair of earplugs is insane. It will improve your sleep quality, it will better you, it will improve every single area of your life. And that's a simple tool. You just put it here and you have your peace and quiet. No matter what's happening around you, you're gonna still be able to get proper amount of sleep. You can also create some white noise with a fan if you want to. I've never really done that because I'm traveling around a lot, so I don't wanna carry or buy a new fan in every city, but it's definitely a viable strategy I can do right now. And the next tip that I have for you guys is simply sleeping in a dark room. So you wanna make sure that your environment that you're sleeping in is a dark room, that there's no light coming in. Let's say four or five in the morning, this light starts penetrating and just wakes you up, right? So you wanna be sleeping in a dark room. You wanna create your little cave. They can do this in a variety of ways. I mean, some people like to just simply put, put garbage bags in their windows. I mean, I've done that as well at certain points when I'm traveling, when I have to like just engineer a solution right on the spot. But that's definitely something you can do to improve your sleep quality, or at least you wanna use a sleeping mask. That's the bare minimum you can do. I'm gonna leave one in the description below with an Amazon link, so if you guys are not sure which one to get, I'm gonna leave the one I have, which is a, just a very, very cheap one, which is really effective, you know, it's very lightweight. You don't really feel it when you're sleeping, and it changes a lot of things, right? So it improves your ability to actually fall asleep and stay in that high quality sleep mode, and that's something that you need. And essentially, I mean, that combined that I just said, like those tips combined with the fact that you are sleeping in that quantity of between at least eight to nine hours a night, it will massively, massively improve your life. And remember, it's a cumulative effect and you can actually pay off that debt after some time if you are not able to get, let's say, a certain portion of the day or a certain portion of the week, for some reason you're stressed out, you just can't fall asleep or something like that, you can still pay off that debt using things like naps, you can do things like specifically blocking out a day of the weekend, let's say a Saturday or a Sunday, where you will actually get that excess sleep that you need to pay off that debt, and then you can start off from scratch, start off from zero. And I've actually done things like uh, sleeping challenges where I would just sleep without having any, uh, any alarm and just let my body sleep as much as it wants, and sometimes I would end up sleeping 12 hours. And speaking of that, one final tip that I've almost forgotten here to share with you guys is actually dialing down the room temperature of the room where you're sleeping. And that's a really important thing because we found throughout the research that you actually sleep the best with somewhere between uh, 65 to 70 Fahrenheit, which is about 18 to 21 degrees Celsius. That at that temperature, your body's in an optimal state to actually have that high quality of sleep. So you wanna make sure that you do that, you wanna make sure that you dial down the temperature or increase the temperature a little bit if necessary. And for most people, I mean, depending on your country, depending on your geography, your location, wherever you are, this is gonna be different, but you wanna make sure to set up that little environment that you have to make sure that the environment works for you. Once you invest this a little bit of time in this upfront, this will be paying off for you in the long run massively with your health, with your productivity, with your business, like all these things that we talked about, everything will get enhanced. So that is all what I had for you guys in this video here from inside of the Pantheon in Rome, Italy, which is an amazing location to film in. I'm pretty excited, pretty happy to be able to share these tips with you. These are the things that changed my life completely. I remember when uh, I was struggling with this a lot, a lot of um, times it would just not be sure what's happening and you know, I'm getting sick, I'm not being able to perform in the gym. And usually, I mean, we jump to supplements, we jump to all these bullshit marketing solutions instead of actually looking at the basics, which is one of the things, which is the sleep. And once you handle that, then you can worry about all these other things like supplements, hacks, or whatever other productivity tool out there is it. This is the one, this is the one you wanna invest your time in. This is, if someone asks me, what is the one thing I can do right now to better my life in every single area of my life? This is improve your sleep, get more sleep. That's my sincere answer. You don't have to, this, this is just no marketing here because you can't market having more sleep. There's nothing you can do about that. You can't sell it. That's why it's not very famous among the 
I guess the fad diets or the fad marketing, the supplement marketing and things like that, it simply is what it is and it works 100 fucking percent as I've proven on myself and on hundreds of other guys that I've worked with. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. Let me know in the comments below actually how much of sleep do you get per night? So how many hours of actual sleep do you get per night? So leave me a comment below, let me know and I'm interested to hear from you guys. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button right in the face and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.